All right, today we're making this great arts and crafts style wall clock. It's a perfect project that you can fit into a weekend. And hey, if you like tips and tricks on woodworking or updates on new tools, be sure to subscribe to the Laguna channel. So we'll rip some stock to width for our wall clock and keep in mind that these style components do need to be a full inch thick board. And that's just to have room for the mechanicals of the clock once everything's assembled. Set the blade height to just higher than the workpiece thickness to set yourself up for making some cross cuts. You wanna cut everything to length and a stop block is certainly handy so that you know all the rails come out to exactly the same dimension. Once everything's cut to length, we'll be able to think about the joinery for this project. We'll start with the mortises. So go ahead and chop out the three mortises in each style with whatever the best method you have in the shop. And then it's time to switch over to a dado blade. And anytime you're running a dado blade, of course, you'll remove the riding knife from your table saw. But a dado blade is a great accessory to have. It's one I turn to time and time again in the shop. Speaking of handy things to have for the table saw, probably my number one used accessory is this sacrificial fence for my Fusion F2. Just clamp that onto the high-low fence and it lets you bury the blade partially into that sacrificial fence for making tenons that are not quite as wide as your dado stack. So we'll cut the back side first and that's a blade height of a quarter inch. And then from there, just use your mortise as a guide to set the other face of the tenon cheek until things come together with a snug friction fit. We'll knock out the shoulder cuts with the same setup just to make sure everything stays nice and consistent for the joinery on this project. Of course it helps if you have a good dust collector too to keep the work surface nice and clean and to avoid any dust flying around the workshop. Now once you've had a chance to do a good test fitting and make sure that all the parts come together as expected, we'll head over to the bandsaw and use a half inch wide resawing blade to trim a subtle taper on the top and bottom of both of these styles. Just gives it a little elegance to this wall mounted clock. And then there's a couple special operations at the router table. One is to use a bearing guided bit to cut a slot. And this will actually receive the clock face for this project. The clock face is held captive in this groove. So once you assemble it, there's no removing that clock face. It's in there for good. Another operation at the router table is just to cut a simple rabbit. That'll receive a quarter inch plywood panel to support the tile. And finally, cut a couple of keyhole slots to hang this clock on the wall. We're just about done with this project as we head to the finishing room and pre-finish all of the parts before gluing it up for final assembly. Alright guys, be sure to look for the blog at lagunatools.com that includes all the materials list for this project as well as the hardware to source that clock and the decorative tile. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.